Hey guys, and welcome back to Kerr Outdoors. So today, I'm here with my little brother, Logan, and today we're going to be teaching you guys how to cook a carp. But before we get started, let's play the clip of right after when my brother caught this carp. All right, James, nice job. Yeah, I finally caught one. This is the fourth one that has taken my line. It is crazy. I've lost all the other ones, so finally. As soon as I got it in, the hook popped out of its mouth and I jumped in the water and grabbed it and pulled it back up. But yeah, it's great. I'm going to let <laughs> him back job. go and keep on fishing. All right, so as you guys can tell, my brother was really excited in that video. Um, for the past couple of days, we've actually been going carp fishing. The first day, I was the only one to catch anything, and it was almost reversed the second day. I didn't even catch anything, but my brother was doing pretty good. So today we're actually cooking up one of his carp. So yeah, without further ado, let's teach you guys how to cook a carp. I love fish. <laughs> yeah, so we had to get it out of the freezer because um, it was a couple days since my brother caught this. And then we had to put it in our microwave. And in doing that, we kind of like cooked and messed up the tail, but that shouldn't affect it just because our main source of meat is in the body. So what we're gonna do now is our first step is gonna be scaling it and gutting it. So um, I'm just doing this as a fillet. So yeah, so now let's scale it. Um, I'm gonna take it in my backyard and let's do that. All right, so now I'm in my backyard. So let's get into scaling this thing. All right guys, so we're in my backyard. Now um, we're gonna have to scale this thing because we cannot eat it with all of the scales on. Um, in lots of my videos, and one thing that I normally do is go um, fishing for trout. And with trout, you can leave the skin on because they don't have any big scales. So basically, if it will come off, we're just going to run the knife along it like that. See, the tail already fell off. That's okay. Run the knife along it like that. Get these scales off. All right, so we're going to do this to both sides. So I'll see you when that's done. All right, guys, so now what you're going to do is you want to gut this. I've already started making the cut just to make sure this would work. I actually am not sure at all if this is the proper way to gut um, a carp. This is how we do it with trout. So, you know, this is how I'm going to do it with the carp. So basically, here, I'll explain it and then do it. So basically, you want to go from here all the way down to up by where um, the base of its gills are. And uh, then, at least with a tr uh, trout, you would cut a little slit right there through the gills and then rip it all down. Um, I'm gonna try that with this. If it does not work, then I'll probably just end up cutting it all down to right here and then ripping all of the guts out. And for your guys' pleasure, I am not going to show all of the guts on camera, but yeah. So I'm going to finish that up, and then we'll actually get into the cooking part. All right, guys, so it's gutted, and now it's time to fillet it. So I do not fillet things a lot, so I'm not an expert at this quite yet. But from what I've heard, basically what I'm supposed to do is find the backbone and then go in and down with my knife in there and then cut across to make a fillet. Alrighty guys, so we are on this side of our fish. So what we're going to do, we are going to um, basically just attempt at filleting it. I've already started cutting a little bit, but have run into a little bit of pr problems. So, I don't know, we might just have to take this one step at a time. My main problem right now, or my main concern is just not cutting my fingers off. So whatever we have to do to make that happen, then that's great. Okay. those bones. Ugh. This is a very mutilated carp. Okay. Hopefully it looks better when, by the time we cook it. I might not even use my knife for this part. I might just peel that um, meat right off the 
skin. All right, guys, so now we are going to be cooking them. So if you take a look right here, we have our pieces of meat. Um, this one is probably the biggest one. Like I said, I'm still not very good at this. Um, but yeah, so that's our biggest piece, and then we've got some other pretty good sized pieces. So all we've got going here is we have our frying pan or skillet, and it has a very thin layer of oil on it. Um, we're not actually going to use a ton of seasonings. I might grab something and just sprinkle it on. But yeah, so for the most part, it's going to be fairly simple. All right, let's pop these in without getting burned. And when you hear it sizzle like that, you know that it's good. Ow, it got burned by the oil. That's hot. Leave those cooking, let them flip, or let them cook in there for every, like two or three minutes and then flip them every once in a while. But yeah, all right, let's get into this. Alrighty guys, so here's what we got going on that we're cooking. Um, so I don't want to get my hands too close, but yes, yeah, so we've got some fish over here. It almost reminds me of like fish and chips, just like deep fried fish. And then I wasn't actually sure if the carp was going to work out entirely, and I still wanted something good to eat, so I um, have some antelope um, backstrap steaks right there, and there's two of them. So, you know, whatever turns out, it'll be good. <laughs> but yeah, so we flipped them once. Um, we let them cook just a little bit too long on the first side just because we had something going on with the oil where it was like exploding inside the pan. So I turned the heat down. But yeah, so they're cooking pretty good. I'm thinking maybe another like three or four or five minutes on this side and then they're probably going to be good. So yeah, it was fairly easy. Alrighty guys, so our food is just about done. So I'm going to take our carp out. I'm gonna let that sit right there. Get old antelope steaks. Yeah, that's about it. All right, so I'm just gonna let these sit out for a couple minutes, let them cool, and then we'll give them a good old taste test. All right, guys. Well, so our food is pretty much cool. Um, I'm gonna hand my camera off to my little sister, and yeah. Well, let's do a taste test. Okay, guys. All right, so um, first let's just do the car. It's a good old piece. Um, I still have a lot of bones in the car. So, you know, this should be interesting. It tastes pretty good. I'm gonna try a bigger piece. Yeah. All in all, it just basically tastes like fish. <laughs> it does not taste as good as trout, but I've heard a lot of people say bad things about carp and say that it's super bad and say how horrible it tastes. But trying this, I don't even know what they're thinking. Like, it just tastes like regular fish. Like, you basically just fillet it and fry it up and just, it tastes pretty good. That's actually pretty good. Sweet. All right. Well, let's now move on to the antelope, which I did just for fun, which is not really a taste test, but I just want to eat antelope. Tell me a piece of that steak. It's looking pretty good. And I was gonna put seasonings on this. And that. But I forgot. Flawless. That's pretty good. Yeah. All in all, I say antelope definitely gets a thumbs up and carp definitely gets a thumbs up. I would try it again. Yeah. I I like it. Sweet. Well, 
thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I personally love making videos for you guys, and if you're new to my channel, um, please subscribe. Uh, make sure to drop a like on this video, and see you in the next one.